Get ahead of yourself. <laughs> so then, then the kingdom of God is all about sovereignty. When he speaks, it happens. No one questions it. No one stands against it. No one does anything other than when God says it, it happens. So if I'm going to seek the kingdom of God, then I've got to seek his sovereignty. Now, folks, I want to tell you something. There is some stuff going on in our lives that's not sound. There, there, there is some stuff that goes on in our lives that's going on out in the world, and it's trying to get into our churches, and it's got into some churches. That's not something. It's not God. Okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm not a finger pointer, but I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. God has to be the focal point of our life, or he's not sovereign. That's right. In order to be to a point where he speaks to you and it happens. In order to come to a point where he says, child, I need you to do this, and you just take off and you start going. It needs to come to a point where we are so trusting in God that if he says, come to this cliff, step off into midair, and we step. That we have such a trust in him that we'll do what he says without any backing up. Sovereignty means that God is supreme in power and that he has absolute dominion over all creation. Wow. Lord. God's sovereignty is real and that's where a lot of people are missing it. They think it's some sort of a spooky something or other out there in somewhere. But no. He said, I'm going to come and take up my abode. I, I don't know about you, but when I think about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost coming in here. You see, you see, Moses had a temple that he carried from place to place. Solomon went and built a temple that was beautiful. But when Jesus came, he changed that. That temple come in here. Woo! That, that temple, that temple changed locations. Saints of God out there in, in the Philippines. You have the temple. Carry it brightly. Carry it bravely. Carry it with victory. Carry it victoriously. Walk on with it. Let the temple of the, the kingdom of God dwell in you wholly and completely and with power. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God gives all of us to be free moral agents. After a minute, I can make any decision I want to make. And God's not going to rain fire down on me. But he's going to hold me to the decision I make. And he's going to make me live through that decision. Please hear me. Make your decisions based upon the word of God. I'm, I'm, I'm being drawn more and more to this book. I've been around it for quite a while. But I'm still getting drawn to it. Why? Because in it is my way to heaven. In it is what I need to know for tomorrow. In it is the knowledge of God. And if I have the knowledge of God, First Peter says that I can do all things. It says that I have everything that pertains to God, godliness and life, it, through, the, through the power of Him, through the knowledge of Him. So the more knowledge I have, the more greater I can walk in power. If we want to work in power, get to know God. Seek the kingdom of God. My Lord. Now he lets us make these choices whether right or wrong. You know. But he is a creator. First Timothy 4 tells us he's a creator. And that he is kind and merciful and just and loving and good and compassionate. And he does not will that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. So, so, so what does that say to us, the saints of God? We, we, we've got a message to give. We've got a word to say. Because you see, God don't want nobody to perish. But yet, but yet, Remember the rich man that was in, 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 
in hell and being in torment, and he lifted up his eyes and he said, Oh, oh, hey, uh, 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 Abraham, send, send Lazarus to just, just touch my tongue with some water. Or, or, or please send him to my brothers because they're lost. If you send him, they'll know. And what did Abraham say back? He said, if they, don't men, if they don't listen to the prophets and the preachers now, they'll not listen to someone raised from the dead. You say, well, what, what are you talking about, Pastor Hobbs? I'm saying, we've got a job to do. We can't expect God to come down and do it because he sent us to do it. But we can't do a proper job if we're not anchored in the kingdom of God. Amen. That's right. I've got to see it. I've got to look for it. Well, what do I mean to see it? Well, I got, I got, I'm looking, I'm looking. That, that little lady that lost the coin, she got, she swept her whole house and she right. done everything trying to find it. She was seeking for that coin. If we would begin to seek for the kingdom of God like she sought for that coin, we would find him and something would explode inside of our chest and we'd be doing great exploits for God. Seek the kingdom. Well, what, what is the kingdom? The kingdom is a realm or a place. Where there's a king, and he reigns. You see, in this in this king, in this kingdom, we don't reign; he reigns. And I'm so glad he does, because if he let me reign, I'd mess it up in a day or two, maybe less. But he he has this this sovereign rule. And everybody that walks into it has to walk into it as sovereign. God is the king of all that he has created. Now, the kingdom of heaven dwells with inside the kingdom of God. Okay? So, so everything is the kingdom of God. So that's part of me. I'm part of the kingdom of God. Now, because of my profession, or should I say, because of my confession, I dwell in the kingdom of heaven also. And you say, well, what does that do for me? Well, Paul got into his spirit in, in Philippians. He said, oh, that I may know him. Mm -hmm. Folks, the thing that's missing that I can see in Christendom is a hunger that's right. to know that's him. Right. That's right. You can have your programs, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying anything wrong about programs. You can have all your, 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 your curriculum that you've got. But until we get hungry to know Him. And not, and not just in the power. Well, that's the, that's the exciting part. But Paul said, I want to know Him in His suffering. I, I, I want to I get up close to Him to where I can even feel the pain. Because I know that if I'm that close, He's going to take me through that pain. Is there some suffering to do? Yeah, there may be some suffering. Yes. But God said, I'll be with you. God said, I'll keep you. I'll strengthen you. I'll empower you. I'll bring you through it because I am God. And besides me, there is no other. He's God. He's God all by himself. Yes. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. He only will help me in God. Right. Yes. Right. He's God. Thank you, We've got to get him close. You see, Paul, this may seem a little strange the way I put this, but Paul had gotten tired of dating God. He, he got tired of dropping God off at the door and going away. He got to a point where he said, oh, God, can I just come in? Can I, can I spend the night? Can, can, I, can I get up close to you to where I can feel your breath? Can, can I get so close to you that, that when you think, I hear it? Can I get so close to you that no matter what you say, I say, yes, Lord. Can I get to the place where Isaiah got when he said he went into the temple and behold, there he was high and lifted up and he's praying. And does he fill your place? Does he get into your place? Is he so high that you can see nothing but him in your life? No. And I'm going to tell you how you'll know. Because when Isaiah got to that point, he said, oh, God, I am so unclean. 
I'm undone. You see, when you come into the very presence of God, you feel so unworthy. You feel so undone. You feel like there's nothing I can do to be right. But, but, but my God has the answer. But he looked over one of them seraphims and said, go. And that seraphim ran to the altar, grabbed a tongue of fire off the altar, touched his lips, and he said, you are clean. You see, my God will make you clean. He'll take you from where you are and put you where 